Hi everyone, it's Woody over at Splice, and I'd like to take the next 15 minutes or so and show you how to customize MIDI Composer to make it look and behave a little bit more like Final Cut Pro version 7. So we'll take a look at customizing the timeline, the source and record monitors, a little bit of the window arrangements, and the keyboard shortcuts. So let's start off with the timeline. The Final Cut Pro timeline does not have a time code track at the bottom, and it doesn't have a toolbar at the top. So we're going to remove both of those. To do that, we're going to start off by removing the toolbar by right-clicking inside the timeline, choosing Timeline Settings, and removing the first checkbox, Show Toolbar, like that. Now in so doing, we've lost our audio meters, but we'll get them back in just a moment. Before we continue though, let's go ahead and remove the timecode track. So you come to the hamburger menu of the timeline, that's the lower left-hand corner, officially called the Fast menu, and from there, go to Show Track, and take the check mark off TC1. There we go. Next up, let's customize the timeline a little bit more. One thing to note about the hamburger menu, I'm sorry, the fast menu, is that anything that you can do here will only affect how the timeline displays the sequence. It doesn't actually do any edit operations, so there's nothing you can do here that will actually severely screw up your sequence or make any changes to it. It only changes how it's displayed or shown to you inside the timeline window. All of these settings affect your timeline, not the specific sequence. So in Final Cut Pro, you can have one sequence that's set up to have maybe thumbnails on and, and audio waveforms on, and then another sequence that doesn't have that. In MIDI Composer, all those settings are part of the timeline window itself, not the sequence that's inside of it. So what we're going to do is turn on clip frames. So we get these little icons. They're hard to see, though, because the track is so small. So to make it larger, I'm going to hold down my Alt key or my Option key. It's the same key. Put my mouse cursor between the two tracks until I see a split icon like that and drag it down to make it larger. And if you want to make all your enabled tracks larger, enabled tracks are just the ones that have a, a solid colored background like that, you can also go to the edit menu and pick enlarge track or command L. Command L makes the timeline tracks bigger provided that your timeline's active. It's kind of like pressing shift T in Final Cut Pro. Uh, but in Final Cut Pro, you only have four pre-built choices for it with Shift-T, and in Avid, you can press it as many times as you like, and it just keeps getting bigger. To make things smaller, you can use Command-K. You can remember that keyboard shortcut because it's right beside the letter L. Um, or just go back up to the Edit menu, and you can use Reduce Track there. Note that these two commands only show up if you've clicked in the timeline first. Now we're starting to look a little bit better. I'd like to have some audio waveforms displayed. But I'd like to have the audio waveforms displayed just for track 2, not for track 1. So in MIDI Composer, you can target that. And you start off by clicking this button to show your track control panel. There's a little icon for waveform. And on for track 2, off for track 1. And we'll collapse that back again. Oh, you can see over here that my waveforms are actually different colors. One's gray and one's black. The one that's black means that the sample rate for that clip is the same sample rate as my project settings, whereas the one that's gray means that the sample rate for this particular audio clip is at a different rate than that for my project, and it will be converted in real time during playback. Now, next up, let's bring back the audio meters. So tools, audio tool. I want to have it over here at the side of the timeline, just like Final Cut Pro does. So let's start off by taking the browser which we call the project window, and I'll shove it up towards the top, like that, and make it a little bit wider like that, make this guy a bit smaller. So we don't currently have tabs for your bins, so the only way to do that would be to kind of display them all like this. It gives me more room for the timeline, which I'll make bigger like this, and put the audio tool right in there, drag it down so that it's also Bigger, and the bigger it is, the more detail you get. I should to make the timeline a little bit smaller, and more like that. All right, next up, let's hit up the composer monitor. The composer monitor consists of two rows of buttons at the bottom and two rows of information at the top. So a row of information might be this master timecode at the top, and then a, another timecode display, which you could switch to be some other kind of timecode, like maybe uh, the remaining timecode for your sequence, some other timecode display underneath, and then the name of the clip over here. So I'm going to remove the top row of information because Final Cut Pro doesn't have it. So to do that, right click in your Composer Monitor, choose Composer Settings. On the tab called Window, remove the checkbox called Second Row of Info. A couple notes about the top row. First of all, the name of the clip is actually 
not just for information, it's a menu. You can click on it and then it shows you your recent clips underneath. Final Cut Pro would show recent clips on a little button somewhere down around here. Avid, it's the name of the clip up top. Click it and it actually shows you the name of the clips underneath. They are in alphabetical order by default, unless you hold down the option key and click on it, in which case they're sorted by the time of last access. So whichever one you use most recently is at the top, second most recent is underneath that, third most recent is underneath that, so forth and so on. In Final Cut Pro, over the viewer, you get right around this area a, uh, a display that shows you the marked time, so the mark from in to out. And that is actually this display in Media Composer. So from in to out here in my my source monitor, I have 3 seconds, 14 frames. To make this display show me the marked region in the timeline, just tap in the record monitor. You can see as I toggle back and forth, the center duration display up top changes. In the source monitor, or in the viewer, it's 314. Now over here in the record monitor, or the canvas, it's 524. You can tell which monitor is active because it has the brighter bar underneath. So this is a brighter bar right now, and the, and the record monitor is active. This is a brighter bar right now, and the source monitor is active. Next, let's tackle the buttons. We want to clean up some of these buttons. Um, in Final Cut Pro, for example, we have our edit operations over here. Uh, there are some transport controls that we don't have in Media Composer, so we'll just clear those out. And then there's commands like mark in, mark out, uh, keyframe, and mark clip over in this section. So to customize the buttons that are in Media Composer, you go to the Tools menu and choose Command Palette. So the Command Palette is called so kind of like a painter's palette, has all the colors on it that the painter can choose from. Our Command Palette has on it all the buttons that we can choose from. It's no different than really going to the Tools menu in Final Cut Pro and choosing your button list. Now that it's open, and it's set to button to button reassignment, you can just drag any one of these buttons to reposition them. The buttons aren't live anymore. They don't actually do something. They're not active. They're just able to be moved and changed. Or you can take any button that's up here and move it down below. So I'm going to start off by taking splice and put it there. Splice is like insert. I'm going to take overwrite and put it there. Under my edit, I'm going to take replace and put it there. So already that's looking a little bit more like Final Cut Pro. Up top, I'm going to clear out some of these buttons by going to the other tab, picking blank. And the blank button is just how you remove something. And I'm going to remove a couple of ones from over here too. Final Cut Pro uses five buttons underneath the uh, underneath the canvas for uh, play. And then there's go to beginning and go to end. So that's under the move tab. Go to start and go to end. And then there's a play from into out. So that's under play and it's called the same thing. Play into out. And then they have a play around current, which for us is called an edit review. We'll pick that one. All right, so that's those buttons underneath here. I'm going to tidy up that a little bit too. Start off by removing what we've got. So clear this, clear this, clear that. And we do need those five, actually four. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll put mark in and mark out over there. Edit. Mark in, mark out, there's an add keyframe, there's an add marker, they're called locators. So over here under the more tab we have the eight different locators that we're using in Media Composer, just representing the eight different colors. I'll put the red one down, but you can choose whatever color you'd like. And the last one I'm just going to just drop it out by saying blank. Alright, so now that's customized. You can do the same thing over underneath the viewer, which we call the source monitor. I'm not going to do that right now. Let's look at customizing the keyboard. For example, in Final Cut Pro, if you use the up and the down arrow keys, you go between edits. And in Media Composer, up and down arrow keys do not go between the edits. In fact, there isn't by default a keyboard shortcut that goes between edits. So what we want to do is customize our keyboard by going back into our command palette. Anytime you're customizing or remapping things, even if it's keyboard shortcuts, your command palette has to be open. Having it open tells Media Composer, don't make the buttons work. Actually, let them be reorganized and rearranged. Then in the Settings tab of the Project window, scroll down to Keyboard. You can just tap once on anything, press K, it jumps to Keyboard, and double-click. 
and we want to take these two keys and remap them so that it's go to previous and go to next. And for us, that is under move, and it's actually fast forward and rewind. So rewind goes up the timeline, fast forward goes down the timeline, forward in time. And to really make those stop at every edit point, we want to have them ignore which tracks are turned on. By default, if I press up and down, it only goes between the common edit point for all enabled tracks. And if you look at my timeline for tracks V1, A1, and A2, the only bits that have an edit in common is obviously the very beginning and the very end, as well as this part here. But what I would like for it to do is also stop here at this edit and at this edit, sorry, at this edit. So to do that, I want to have it, I want to have it ignore which tracks are turned on or off. So right click in the Compose Monitor once again, uh, go into Composer Settings, go over to Fast Forward and Rewind and tell it to ignore track selectors. When this is on, you can now go up and down on your keyboard, kind of like that. A couple other things you can do to make it look more like Final Cut Pro. Um, you can change the brightness of the interface. So under Settings, go to Interface, and whichever one has the check mark beside it is the active one. So I'm going to take this active one because it has the check mark beside it, double click it. I can make the interface a little bit darker, like Final Cut Pro tends to make its interface. Um, I actually prefer lighter ones myself, but since this exercise is about making it look more like Final Cut Pro, I'm going to make it a little bit darker like that. Maybe not so dark. <coughs> Excuse me. Final Cut Pro has a snapping button that's located over here. The behavior of the snapping button can be achieved when you drag. Uh, just by holding the command key down. Right now you can see that it's not snapping. Hold down the command key down and it will snap. So it's like a temporary override to turn snapping on. You just hold down the command key in Media Composer. If you want snapping to always be turned on, you can control click in the timeline and go to Timeline Settings, the Edit tab, and tell it to default to snap to edit. Now your snapping will always be turned on. So I'll click Actually, I don't like having snapping turned on. If that's the case, though, so now you can see that snapping is turned on by default. Snap, snap, snap. Um, hold down the command key to override it. So command key always does the opposite of whatever your current setting is. I'll just put that back like that. Uh, how else to make this look like Final Cut Pro? Well, you could, you could change the font. So I'm going to come to the, maybe a bin like this, sequences. Uh, yeah, sure. Go to the Edit menu, set font, the default font of Geneva. Um, it's more of a Mac OS Classic font. I think the Pro apps are using Myriad Pro. There we go. There. So you can see that's a little bit more Apple-like. You can even make it a little bit bigger and easy to see, maybe 14. You can do the same thing in the Composer Monitor. Tap it once, Edit Menu, Set Font. Scroll down to MY. There we are. And take the font size up to maybe 14. I do want to point out that you take a lot of effort to customize your settings in Media Composer. After you've done that, you might want to save them so you can bring them over to another Media Composer system. The option to save or reconfigure your settings is located under the Settings tab of the project window. This little drop down, go ahead and export. And you can save them out to another location. You can, also, you can actually also save them to a, a network drive if you had a, a bunch of AVIDs in a post production facility. And then you could import them from that location. Or, I know many editors that just have a memory stick, and with the memory stick, they keep their settings on it, and when they move between editing systems, they just copy those settings. Uh, your other option is just to go copy the settings directly from the Finder. So, to do that, open up the Finder. Go to Users, Shared, Avid Media Composer, Avid Users, your login name, and then in this list, this is the profile. So you just copy this whole folder to another Avid system, and it will bring along your Avid video editor settings. So that's the end of our quick look at ways to customize Media Composer to make it look and act a little bit more like Final Cut Pro version 7. If you have questions directly relating to this content or other content covered on this YouTube channel, please feel free to leave a comment or subscribe to us. If you'd like to take this course in person, please visit one of Splice's training centers located throughout Canada by visiting splicetraining.ca forward slash MC 101. Thanks.